Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You know, I wanted to take a minute and talk about uh, my motorcycle lift. I've had a few comments on some of the other videos uh, relating to the lift. What I've got is this Harbor Freight uh, motorcycle lift. You know, these things are going for probably $600 now. Uh, but, you know, with all the Harbor Freight discounts, you can get, you know, 25% off and so forth. I've had mine for probably three or four years now, and I think through discounts and things, I probably was in the two to $300 range. But, you know, for, for us, you know, garage therapists, and when we're working on our motorcycles, we don't want to spend the typical $1,000, $1,500, $2,000, $3,000 on a motorcycle lift that we don't uh, use day in and day out but it's extremely convenient when you are working on your bike. <laughs> it's too cold in the early morning. Okay, baby, thanks. Fly my own. You know, I've seen a, a lot of uh, videos out there uh, on YouTube where people have taken these hydraulic lifts. They've uh, put in uh, uh, pneumatic type uh, cylinders in order to bring them up and down without having to pump them up with your foot. I've had a few comments about my lift and and describing uh, how they use it and the things they've done to, to alter it, to make it a little more convenient, a little more stable, a little more safe. I wanna show you one of the improvements I'm planning to make to the lift, and I'm gonna do that today. So one of the first things I wanna do is, uh, you know, uncover the bumblebee I've got over here. I've got both bikes kind of hibernating after I've winterized them. All right, so let me get this bumblebee down off this uh, lift, and then I'll come back to you and we'll talk about the improvements I've made to the lift. Okay guys, so some of the things that I've done to the lift is I uh, added this wheel chalk directly onto the frame. The, the original chalk I thought was not very stable and to be honest, not very good quality. So, and what this allows me to do is ride the bike up onto the lift and immediately uh, chocks the, the front wheel in place. And it also gives me a little wider location to put my tie straps to. I've got a second one actually up here that I use uh, when I, I bolt it to uh, some wood structure when I'm hauling my bike inside the bed of the truck. In addition, you know, there, were, there was a time when I drilled and added uh, these U-bolts uh, to the side when I want to be able to strap the bike down here on the sides for long-term purposes. But nine times out of 10, the, the straps that I use up front off of those two eye bolts uh, gives me plenty of uh, security when I tie the bike down. Now the addition I wanna make to the lift today uh, is gonna help in a lot of ways. And you can see now when I'm riding the bike up onto the lift, uh, I'm slipping on the back tire and just don't have a good friction surface in order to keep the bike stable when I'm riding the bike up. Now I ride up quite slowly and and uh, engage on the wheel chalk here. Anyway, so I wanna make the surface here a lot more stable. So I bought this 80 grit sandpaper abrasive surface. Now this roll is 12 inches by about 30 feet long, and it cost in the neighborhood of 30 to $35 on Amazon. I'll give you a link to that for those that are interested in. So again, anti-slip tape. I think I can get a lot of this oil residue off here and clean this thing up pretty good. And then it'll be a good surface in order to, to uh, put down this adhesive tape. Well guys, what I've decided to do is go ahead and unbolt this wheel chalk. When I put it on here originally, I, I drilled through the lift and, and bolted the wheel chalk down here and through the, the bed itself. So I'm gonna take that off. I, I know there's gonna be some oil and dirt underneath there, so I just wanna get it perfectly clean before I put down that uh, new uh, friction surface. Well guys, I decided to get a little bit smarter on this. Use a little bit of technology.
All right, so we got that wheel chalk off. A lot of oil and grease under here. I'm gonna clean it up real quick. And I've also got this uh, piece that pops out of the, the back here, I think just to allow you to uh, take it out and be able to drop a back wheel. And then obviously the ramp here, I'm gonna clean it up good. You know, that feels pretty clean. No oil. So I think I'm just about ready to roll that, uh, that tape out and See how I'm gonna lay it out. I don't know how many runs I'm gonna go. This thing is about uh, 26, 28 inches wide. I think I'm gonna run two 12 inch wide strips. This thing is 27 inches wide. I think with 24 inches, that'll give me uh, plenty of surface. There'll still be a little bit of exposed red on the outside. This is a, a checker plate steel. So I'm kind of curious how that uh, tape is going to adhere and stick over the checker plate. Had a fella comment on one of my videos uh, recognizing the lift that I had. He had said that he had the same lift, the same chalk, and he mentioned that he had some type of an anti-slip surface he had put on there that got me thinking. And obviously I felt like, hey, I gotta have that too. Because, I, you know, when I ride the bike up on the lift, you just got to get the exact pace going so that you roll easily up onto the lift, just enough to get you into the wheel chalk without hitting it too hard. And I think that if I've got a surface like this, I can just, you know, throttle the bike up onto the lift and never worry about it. Well, the instructions tell me it'd be best if I'm above 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit when I'm putting this on. You know, I'm probably bordering on that here in the garage. I'm gonna think a little bit about how I wanna lay this thing out before I actually cut this stuff because, you know, it, it's not cheap, but at the same time, I, I've got excess if I need it. I'm thinking for, to allow it to adhere well and to have a little bit of a return, and what I mean by that is, is have it wrapped down on this front surface and then again down on the back surface, and then I'll run a piece on each side. Being as I'm not a great carpenter, I tend to measure four times and cut once rather than measure twice and cut once. All right, so I'm gonna cut these two strips uh, 90 inches long, and that should give me two 12 inch wide strips. And then I'm gonna probably do a little bit of overlap in the middle, uh, depending on how much it sticks. I wanna see if I can either butt it together or a slight overlap. So let's see how this goes on. You know, this stuff is cut pretty square, but I still think I want, you know, I could butt it together, but I still think I want to overlap it maybe about a half an inch. I'd rather have a good surface there that, because that's the, that's the wear surface the tire is going to be going over constantly. So if I can double up the thickness uh, just for wear and then to make sure I don't have any kind of a gap. You know, the other thing I thought about is this, this is really going to help, you know, not only just the bike coming up and down, but obviously my feet. You know, I've, I'm constantly, once I get the bike up on that chalk and I start trying to pull it back, you know, I'm up there just pulling with my feet and hands to get the bike up to a, a dead center of that little bell curve until the point that, that I can pull the bike down and, and roll it off the lift. Maybe I'm a little bit anal here, but I really want it to look good once it's put on there. So I'm gonna take my time and get a good layout here. All right, so this is where the rubber meets the road. I'm gonna start peeling this back.
All right, all right, that looks pretty good. Let me see if I can't work it up over all this uh, checker plate. Get a good, a good stick to where I want it. I'm gonna cut this out. I'll take another piece and put down over my uh, removable hatch here for the back wheel. All right, that's looking pretty good. Now I just need to roll it down, tuck the ends, put a little tape on the ends, and uh, then I can work on these uh, the, on the ramp, and I can work on the cutout piece that goes in the back. All right, so I've got it pretty well put on now. I need to maybe run a roller over it a little bit more just to make sure it sticks well. But, uh, you know, I'm real pleased with that. That's turned out really nice. Yeah, that's turned out really nice. I've got it on. You can kind of see how it's kind of adhered to the checker plate steel there. But it's, uh, you know, I'm glad I put a little bit of overlap in the middle here. You can't see it very well. There's about a half inch of overlap right there. And I'll tell you what, this 80 grit, I can sit here and file my fingernails on it all day long. This stuff is really tough. I was sitting here trying to clean something off a little while ago and that white surface there is actually my skin on my thumb. That's some rough stuff. So I think that's going to be really good for the bike to run up on and for my, my boots when I'm trying to get a little bit of uh, force when I'm trying to pull that bike up off the chalk, get it back off the ramp. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I probably won't do on camera, but I'm going to take and wrap that piece there that uh, fills in the slot where you take out for the rear tire here. And then I'll go ahead and run two, uh, two runners right down the, uh, the ramp there. And uh, I'll come back and show you the finished product. All right, so I've applied two uh, strips to the ramp here, uh, much easier than what we did on the actual lift. And then I've also applied the material here All right, so we got that in. So I think the next thing I need to do is I've got to bolt the uh, wheel chalk back onto the front here, and then, you know, we'll be ready to go. We'll pull the bumblebee back up here and see how easy it is. I think I'm gonna sit it back down now. We'll bring the bumblebee back up on it and test it out. That was a lot easier. Generally, I'm back here spinning the back tire if I don't hit it with a, a lot of momentum. All right, good deal. I love it. All 
All right, there's one other thing I want to show you. I bought me another uh, center lift because I, I do like to bring the bike up off the tires when it's parked for the winter. Uh, so I've got this little lift here. I'll show you that. All right, so I bought another little center lift here, kind of like a little scissor jack. And I had one once before, and these things are not terribly expensive, but then again, you're getting, you know, it's really mostly just heavy iron. It's not, it's not the best lift in the world as far as quality goes. Um, but the last one I had, the threaded rod basically jammed where it screws into the other side. It just tore up the threads. You know, I couldn't find parts for it. I had to just throw it away. These things are anywhere from $60 to $150, depending on who you buy it from at Amazon. But all of them are absolutely identical. But I got this one for about $65 on Amazon. So I like to put it under the bike, get the bike up off the lift a little bit, just to get the tires up off the, uh, from touching. And then I cover the bike up, and then I'm stored for the window, winter. Now, you know, the Black Pearl, I've got it on, you know, a typical bike jack now. It's, it's up just slightly up off the ground. And so I'll do the same with the Bumblebee. But because I'm limited on space, you know, I've got to, I've got to do this. I've got to leave one bike on the lift and then one bike over on the other side for the winter. Still gives me a little bit of room to go between the bikes so I can get to my workbench, do other, uh, do other things maybe record another video or two during the winter time but so anyway i'm gonna take that lift put it under the bike and uh, pick the bike up a little bit then we'll let it down and put it to sleep for the winter all right let's get this bike lifted up on the center lift and then we'll we'll be done for the night and then i'll also have to back off on these straps a little bit this will raise the back wheel up and this is what i do when i need to take the back tire off but uh, I'll back off on these straps on the front a little bit. We'll get the whole bike just, you know, an inch or so up off the, off the lift. All right. Okay, guys. So, job done. Get the battery tender on it and we'll cover this bad boy up. So guys, that's a wrap. I really appreciate y'all watching. I uh, hope you picked up a two or three things here related to how to improve your lift. Uh, for those of us that, who don't work on motorcycles for a living, uh, this, you know, four or $500 Harbor Freight lift is more than adequate. I've been using it for five years. Uh, like I say, I've made a, a number of improvements that I, you know, I think makes it a whole lot better and a lot easier to use. And it sure makes my back a whole lot better when it comes to doing maintenance on my bike. Uh, you know, share some comments with me. Tell me the things that I should be adding to my lift or things I should be doing to make my lift more functional. Uh, you know, give us a thumbs up. That really helps uh, move our videos out there and gets a little wider uh, accessibility, maybe a little more viewership. Uh, subscribe if you enjoy what we do. Uh, again, a thumbs up, subscribe. We really appreciate it. So guys, thanks for coming along. The next time I come out here and do a little garage therapy, hope you'll come and go with us. Mm -hmm.